And Brian, you know, we'll get to the suppliers in a moment, but I'm wondering if this move towards vertical integration, does that change the game for Apple? Does it change your outlook for the company? Not necessarily, because this isn't anything that Apple hasn't done already. I think, as Peter just mentioned earlier, if you look at things from a semiconductor spec perspective, they've already been building their own capabilities in-house. Processors, not just the CPUs, but also now you're looking at graphics processing units. They're doing quite a bit of stuff on that already. So they've already been quite verticalized as it is. And this, this is just another step, uh, I would argue, is not that much of a surprise in many ways that they are moving in this direction. How much, though, does it kind of change the game when it comes to the, the supply chain story for the likes of Samsung, for LG Electronics, uh, you know, Pegatron, a, a number of these Asian suppliers that have kind of become household names because of Apple? Yeah, well, if you look at just the display itself, the direct impact would be on Samsung, at least if you look at from an OLED perspective, right? Current generation OLED screens, we reported in fourth quarter 2017 that 96% of smartphone-sized OLED screens came from Samsung Display, right? So if the, if the industry is moving towards micro-LED, there's naturally a direct impact to that. It's not to say that Samsung can't fight back, but of course that, uh, at least if you look at it at face value, that's where there's a bit of a challenge. The thing is, these are not easy, are they, Brian, ultimately, to make it? They tried before this sort of game, tried their hand at it, and they gave up on it. So there's no guarantee they're going to have success this time, or maybe there is. You tell me. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing, right? To that point about this not being a surprise, I mean, we've been watching micro LED for maybe three, four years now in the sense that Apple had acquired this little company in Taiwan called Luxview, right? And they're the ones that had a lot of that IP uh, in this new technology. So the industry has been watching this for a while. We kind of knew Apple was moving in this direction already, and they kind of had that strong grasp thanks to that acquisition. But as you pointed out, there was some questions about how feasible it was to produce that reliably in bulk. Um, and they kind of went, we, you know, the, the, the industry kind of went quiet a bit on it for a while until, I guess, your story came out this morning. It was like, oh, okay, there's progress being made, and it's a good encouraging sign that we may be moving in that, uh, further along in that direction. This is it. They're not so great at the manufacturing side of things, ultimately, are they? Uh, sorry, I missed your question on that one. Say that again. Sorry, Brian. I was saying, uh, Brian, you know, it's not been what they do. It's not. It's out of their comfort zone. This. They've not been great at manufacturing their own stuff, have they? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there may be a. There, there will probably be partners to help manufacture along the uh, along the way. So. Uh, I think more importantly, don't think of it so much about whether they manufacture on their own. It's really about the IP, um, whether this is IP that's exclusive to them and whether others can get into it. I think there will be some competitive pressure that comes along the line, and there probably will be uh, some outsourcing or, or some other contractors that come along and play. But, yeah, at this point, if Apple's really been the one that's spearheading this, then that's really that competitive advantage that we need to watch for. They may have a lead on this, which gets kind of interesting.